Welcome to the third and final part of our short course on how to use GIMP, the free image manipulation program. In this part, we're going to look at paths. Now, this is a bit embarrassing because I'm not the best with paths but it, or paths, depending on where you come from. But it's something you should know about and something I'm practicing. And I will give some written instructions on the site to help you navigate your way with paths. They are very important and very useful. Secondly, we'll look at some of the extra things you can do with layers. And lastly, I want to look at some of the add-ons you can get to add to your GIMP program to make it do even more stuff. Now, I say this is the last part of the course. Please don't think if you've watched these three videos, you'll know everything you need to about GIMP. There's lots, lots more to it. Like me, you probably just want to know enough to be able to do your designs. But if you get stuck on anything, there is tons of information all around the web which you can access to help you with different parts of GIMP. So please use those resources available. Okay, on. Let's look at the first part of this video, which is going to be on paths. As you can see, I've opened a blank file here. It's A4 size, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to start by clicking on the Paths tool, which you'll find up on the top left. Here, yours might look slightly different. And then if we go back to the sheet, you'll see just by clicking, I get these series of lines. Just hold down Control, one last click, and that should join it together. Now I can move these around. It's important to know that these aren't actual lines, it's just a path, it's like a guide. It won't show anything itself on your work, but I'll come to that in a minute. So there's lots you can do here. You can move the dots around. We should be able to add another one. No, I need to change. Um, the controls are in this bottom left here and I'll change that to edit. I'll give you a list of these commands, so don't worry too much about it. Now, hopefully in edit, there we are. We can add another one. I'm going back to design, so I can move that around. Now you'll see these handles appear. I can make them appear on the other ones as well. Now it's these handles which give you the curves. And you just mess around with the curves as much as you like. And that's how you make your shapes. You can move one at a time like this, or you can grab the line and move both of them. Sorry, made an extra one there. Grab the line and move both of them. And that is how you make your shape. So you can add extra nodes, that's what these are called. If you're in edit mode, back to design mode. I think you can see quite quickly how you can make up a nice shape. Now I did say this isn't actually there, it's just a path. And if you look down on the right hand side at the bottom, you'll see there's a tab here, Mark Paths, just click on it, and that's where your path will be. Go back to Layers and go back to the image. Now, at the moment it's just a path, so to make it into anything, if I select this down here, uh, Stroke Path, and it should bring up a little box. It'll take the color from your top color palette 
and you can have the line width you can make it a pattern and other things so I'm just going to concentrate on a solid line there and say stroke and there now we have a real pattern I can go back to my paths menu show or hide the path we'll hide it at the moment my select tool and you see we've just got the design left now I know that all seems a little bit complicated and it's going you're going to need to play around with it I can use the same path again if I go back and change my layer I can come back and have the path in fact let's take that top layer off so we can't see it there's my path back again I can go back I can make some changes to it or I can indeed start a second path and go in here add a new so we've got a new path there and you can save these paths for using again and again there's another path let me just take off the original path but here's here's our new path and again when i'm happy with that make sure i'm on the correct layer stroke path and stroke just stop the path from showing there we go now we've got our two different shapes so these are very very useful um, let me clear all of that I'll just bring in a couple of guides I've already set up now to go back to my path again my path tool Just spend a couple of minutes getting this how I want it. That'll be quite nice. Straight that path. There we go. So that is very, very roughly how to use paths to make a shape. I will give you a list of commands, and it's something you should just sit down and practice I haven't practiced it enough yet um, but I will be doing more of it now on to the second part of this lesson I want to show you a few more things you can do with 
layers etc and I'm going to use this shape I've just made as you can see um, and what I'm going to do in the bottom right hand side just right click on that layer and you can't quite see it there but there is a duplicate layer there so I'll duplicate duplicate it and you can see I've got two of them now let's just take that one away I've got two of them staying on there up here for layer transform flip horizontally and you can see what it's done to my image now back to the bottom right again this time I'm going to choose merge down so those two layers merge into one and again I'm going to duplicate it go back to the top left layer transform and this time we'll flip it vertically and again I'll merge those two down into one and that's something you can do again and again um, it's very good especially for window designs let's just resize this Again, I'll duplicate that layer and this time I'm just going to move it across again merge the two down duplicate the layer there we go bring the other one back and I think you can see a pattern emerge in there so there's lots you can do with the duplicate layer flip merge and resize you don't have to do everything from scratch each time okay the final part of our video is going to be about the add-ons you can get to GIMP now unfortunately the main place you used to get these add-ons is closed at the moment they've sort of closed the old one haven't opened the new system yet so you won't be able to get them from there but I'd still like to recommend a couple to you and there are safe places to down, download them. One is FX Foundry. Now this adds a lot to GIMP. Let me just open it up again. You see FX Foundry, and it adds all these different things including, which would be useful, some different shapes. Okay, so there's some, some different shapes there which should be useful in your designing. As lots of other things as well, mostly to do with photos, etc. Um, but you might want to take a look. While we're here, take a look at these extra painting brushes, uh, extra palettes there, and extra gradients down here. Now, you won't use those so much in designing, but they are useful in other aspects of GIMP. And they all come from GIMP Paint Studio. And I'll put the um, URLs, the addresses of these in. There's nice full instructions there on how to install. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the, this video. Indeed, this little set of videos as I've said before, GIMP is a very powerful program. Um, 
It's a brilliant program for being free. I can't recommend it enough. And it is what I use for all my design work. And hopefully you'll be able to use it for that as well. Happy crafting.